In the wake of the tragedies in both El Paso, Texas, as well as Dayton, Ohio, um, the subject of red flag laws have now come up to the national stage with leaders like President Trump asking that they be enacted in various states. Uh, red flag laws are complicated. Today we're going to try to educate you and unwind some of the issues surrounding them. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about red flag laws and what they mean to you. Um, because this is a pretty uh, thorny subject, um, I'm going to be working with a clipboard so I can get the facts right and don't just blur past this stuff. So bear with me. Um, a red flag law is a gun violence prevention order. And in California, that means it allows police and family members to petition a state court to temporarily remove firearms from a person who may present a danger to others or themselves for up to a year. And a judge makes the determination based on statements and actions made by the gun owner in question. After a set time, the guns are returned to the person from whom they were seized unless another court hearing extends the period of confiscation. Um, Connecticut was the first in 1999, and today 17 states have passed some sort of red flag law. So red flag laws are spreading. Um, we're going to include a map, give you an idea a little bit about uh, which states are, are affected by this. But it's one of those things where I would expect that we start to see more. Um, there have been some academic studies that have tried to explore this topic to see how they effective they are. And it's easy to see that a lot of these studies have competing um, conclusions. For example, um, in 2018, the Journal of Psychiatric Services, and they operated off CDC data from all suicide in all 50 states from 1981 to 2015, the research concluded that there was about a 7.5% reduction in firearm suicides in the 10 years after its enactment. However, that's not the only study. There's also one that came out from gun rights advocate John Lott. He found that red flag laws have no significant effect on murder, suicide, the number of people killed in mass public shootings, robberies, aggravated assaults, or burglaries. So depending on who does the study, could very well easily have a different conclusion. Now, there are a lot of people that oppose red flag laws, and they argue that this legislation infringes on the Second Amendment, on our rights to due process, and they also object to ex parte hearings that take place where you're basically not able to defend yourself or speak your mind. Now, the NRA has worked to defeat such legislation in places like Utah, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, but in March of 2018, the NRA reversed its suggestion so that it might support such laws. And it made a list of conditions, including a judicial finding by, quote, a clear and convincing evidence that the person poses a significant risk of danger. So the NRA's taken a lot of heat, first by going in one direction and then basically walking it backward. Now, it's also worth talking a little bit about the results. In 2018, a Maryland man was shot and killed by police when they tried to enforce a gun restraining order. According to police, there was a scuffle involved with the gun and the man was shot and killed. And as of 2019, there's about 75 jurisdictions in the United States that have declared themselves to be two-way sanctuaries, meaning that they oppose emergency protection orders, enforcement of gun background checks, and at times with the assistance of the NRA. So some cities are basically saying, no, we're not going to stand for this. We're not going to enforce it. However, in the wake of the El Paso, Texas shootings in Dayton, Ohio, um, President Trump and Dan Crenshaw both went out publicly to urge states to create red flag laws in an effort to try to create a balance between um, preventing people that are mentally unstable from getting guns, 
but also trying to support the Second Amendment at the same time. And it's a slippery slope because red flag laws do infringe on the Second Amendment. They do infringe on our ability to have due process. And um, because of that, like I said, it's a slippery slope that uh, affects our liberty. Um, probably the best quote that I can come up with was the one from Ben Franklin, who said, those that would trade their liberty for security deserve neither. Now, I'm still a believer that the best way to stop a bad man with a gun is a good man with a gun. So I'll keep training, and I'll keep training others to do the same. And for those of you that are interested in contacting me about getting training yourself, you can find us at the Real Firearms Education and Training. We'd like to thank all of our supporters for sticking with us. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the like, hit the share, also hit the, the little bell so you get instant notifications, and also you can come check us out on Patreon and help support us that way. On behalf of Shooter the Series, I'm Ed Thorell. Y'all take care.